Hello and welcome to another blog on the Crochet Luna channel. My name is Claudia and I'm coming to you from the San Diego area in Southern California. This is season seven, blog number five. Yes, five. So I wanted to say welcome to everyone, all to my returning viewers and any new viewers. I just want to welcome you to my channel. Um, I mostly talk about crochet and sewing, some knitting and, um, yeah, lots has been happening since we last chatted. I uh, have been really sick again, yes. Um, and I had planned to record videos in the month of February and the month of March. But um, I've been battling a combination of vertigo, which is no fun. And then just uh, like a string of colds and flus, I just can't seem to want to leave my body so I've been not so great health wise but try my best people try my best um, I feels like I have to either wear a mask at work for the rest of the time that I'm working or I mean I really don't know what to do I have not been exposed to so many people for so long because I used to work from home that now that I work in a regular office, I work at a school, and I feel like I'm exposed to so many more things that I'm getting, uh, I'm catching a lot more bugs and things like that. And the problem is that they tend to stick with me. So, um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of miss working from home and not <laughs> being around um, everybody who is sick. And I mean, some people don't even know that they're, you know, they're sick or they're, maybe they're about to get sick. But for some reason, it all just, you know, I'm like a magnet for that kind of stuff. Anyway, here I am now um, having passed my seven year anniversary. It was March 29th. So I am uh, now... A seven-year veteran of YouTube and um, it's been fun it's been a great ride I don't tend to look look back at the episodes that I've recorded but I did do a little bit of that while I was convalescing in bed and it's interesting to see how much things have changed you know from episode one till now but I think it's great I think it's you know if you have a YouTube channel is whatever you want to make it you know we are not professional people um, at least I'm, I'm not a pro. I'm not, you know, this is just something that I do that I like cause I like to enjoy, uh, I enjoy sharing, you know, my craftiness with people and, and I really, 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 really am grateful for people who do that as well because when I'm sick and I'm in bed and, you know, I can't crochet or I can't craft, I tend to be watching YouTube, um, you know, videos. So yeah. So yay me seven years. <laughs> Anyway, let's move on. I it's I have so many things, and I, I did record a bunch of like little videos of stuff that I've been doing. I don't know that I'll I'll be able to pack it all into this episode, but um, I did do some fun things uh, in between not being sick. I went axe throwing, and um, that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed throwing axes. Um, if I can find some video, I'll put it here. Hello everyone. It is a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in my hometown of Escondido and I am going to meet some friends and we are going to throw axes. We're going to throw some axes at things. I don't know. I've never been. I'm super excited. Let me show you what this place looks like.
you guys see that guy throwing some axes? That's what we're gonna be doing. So I'm really excited. But yes, I went axe throwing with some co-workers and then I went to a farmer's market, a local farmer's market that just had oof, so much good stuff. I don't tend to cook a lot. Actually, my husband's the one that does a lot of the cooking, but uh, I found so many like beautiful vegetables that I was just like, oh my gosh, I really wanted to make something. So I, uh, we picked up some mushrooms. There was a, a vendor that just sold mushrooms and uh, we made this really delicious mushroom dish. And yeah, I want to go back. And I was even thinking, but I, I don't know that I, it will happen. I was even thinking that I could vend, be a, little, uh, a vendor at one of these farmer's markets because I don't see a lot of like, you know, like crafty products per se. So I thought if I could put a stall up and... Maybe sell some yarn and sell some of my yarny goodies. Um, but it's a lot of work. I mean, that is a lot of work. So we'll see. Just something, you know, something to think about. Then, let's see, where else did I go? I went somewhere else. I, oh, I went to see Dune uh, Part 2. I loved it. I'm a huge Dune fan. I'm a huge sci-fi fan. It was long, but I didn't mind it. I knew where the story was going. I didn't mind that. Um, so I really, really enjoyed that. I've been doing a lot of reading, uh, more, mostly audible. I've been listening to a lot of books. I'm going through the whole, um, uh, Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Moss. I'm on the fifth book now, really enjoying that, that story. And, um, have done more reading this first half of the year than I did all of last year, which is pretty sad in that last year I didn't do a lot of reading, but, um, really fun that I've, I'm starting to physically buy some books. My library, I'm very, very lucky to have a, a public library that has a uh, dedicated space to sell books. And so they um, have book sales almost every single day. And, and there's some really good stuff. And you, you can't beat the price. I mean, I, I just bought a, uh, a quilting magazine and a quilting book for, they were 25 cents each. Like I could can't beat it. So I've been going more to the library to check out books. Um, and usually what happens is if I, if I check out a book that I like, um, I will, I'll buy it cause I want to keep it in my library, but it's good to be able to kind of like preview that book, um, before just, you know, spending the money on, on it. Um, especially when it's like a, a book about, you know, like either crochet patterns or, um, quilting and stuff like that. If I feel like it's a good reference, then I'll buy it and I'll put it in my library. But it's, like I said, it's really nice to just sit down with a cup of tea and go through some of these books. Yeah, so that's what I've been doing. I've been really, it's been really, really low key because I just have not been well, which has been really sad because I have so many things that I want to get done and so many things that I want to do and I'm just stuck being sick. So, you know, it is what it is. So let me start off with my first FO. I am really, really, really excited to share this with you. And I've been looking at it all these weeks going, I need to record a podcast so I can use this. Um, I have really, really enjoyed um, sewing lately and, uh, you know, hand sewing and, and, and looking at quilting things. And, and like I, I think I talked about it on my last video. I'm very intimidated by the whole quilting thing because it's, it's, it's hard. I have, um, I have some issues with, with, uh, visually spacing things and, and looking at how things, uh, come together. And I love putting things together. Like I can visualize how I want something but I do, ha I seem to, to have a, a, um, not a stumbling block, but like an issue about really how to measure and cut and get things to fit 
within a certain amount of measurements, like parameters. I don't know if I'm explaining that right, but well, whatever. So I have this coffee table in my uh, living room that I loathe. I hate, I hate this thing. It's so ugly, but my family won't let me get rid of it. I tried one time to put it outside and I said, you know, let's just get rid of it. We'll get another one. And my son was not happy. So I brought the thing back in and, um, I have a tray on it that I used, to, you know, to cover some of the wonky spots on it. But since I started sewing, I thought I'll just sew like a little, like a little cover for it, like a little tablecloth. So this is what I came up with and it's all scraps from my, um, my stash that I had and I went ahead and sewed, let me stand up, it's kind of big, it's all, it's all scrappy and there's the other side of it. So yeah, I was um, really happy with how this came out, Maybe if I move back, let's see. So it's not huge, but it's big enough that it covers, and here's the back of it. So I um, just used fabric that I had in stash, and like I said, I, I thought I had measured things correctly, but um, when I put it together, I realized that I was going to Add, need to add some stuff so like the corners are a little wonky I mean there's all kinds of wonkiness going on but I'm really happy with it I went ahead and just did straight quilt straight stitches on it for quilting so the quilting that I did if you look in the back they're just um, straight lines you can see it right there nothing fancy just straight lines I was really proud that I was able to do the binding on it this is the first time I've ever done anything like this. I did do hand binding on the back. And I, I really like the color combinations that I have here. I actually put it, I cut it one day and I put it together. I think it took me the next day. It was like a Sunday and I spent all day putting it together. And then, you know, the binding was like another day. So it was, it didn't take long. I just, um, you know, was able to have large chunks of time to do it. So now this will go in my, on my coffee table. And this is my first FO. My second FO is a knitting FO. Um, I've been wanting to do a little knitting. So I went ahead and searched for a basic pattern and I found this one called the cooler side of warm this is by Espastri Co the Melissa the, the, the Melissa the designer is Melissa uh, Clu, Clulo there you go and it is a cowl that has this sort of like slit on the side it's all ribbing and just knitting and I did mine with a uh, Malabrio Rios in the color uh, whole whole grain. It's this color right here. And here's mine. Here's that side opening that you have. That it kind of falls right on your shoulder. You can see it's just all knitting and then ribbing and then more ribbing. Very simple. I really like it. It's very cozy. This is a uh, DK weight, so it um, tends to get worked up pretty quick. I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's got, again, it's got some wonkiness, but I guess that's like the theme of my year so far. <laughs> wonky projects. Um, instead of dodgy, they're wonky. <laughs> so here's this interesting striping that was in the yarn, one of the skeins. I used almost two skeins, not quite two skeins of this uh, Malabrio Rios yarn. It just um, was really nice to work with. I really like it. And I wanted to have something that was kind of like a neutral color to wear. Um, I'm already thinking I might make a second one because I really like the fit of it. So we'll see. So this is my second FO. 
For my works in progress, I have been working on my fluffy, fluffy cap. Oh my gosh, my fluffy clouds sweater by um, Rosina of Zines and Roger. This is little fluffy clouds. This is the pattern right here. And I I did start, and actually I had a, a quite quite a bit done, and then I realized my stitch count was off, so I had to um, frog it back to here. But this is what I have so far. I had actually like I think I had like four or five of these um, rows with the with the puff stitches. And then I went to do some counting and I'm like, oh, I am off. And I don't, I don't know where, I don't know where it happened. So I took it back to where I had the right stitch count. So here, this is where I'm at. So I've got this going. And again, the yarn that I'm using for this is from the Fiber Genie. This is the, the yarn. And that's what it looks like. Really nice yarn to work with. I, I really, I, I want to put more time into it, but um, like I said, I had to re, I had to frog and I'm basically restarting. That's living in my me made bag. I really like this bag. I gotta make more of this size. This this size is a great size. I love it. Um, for uh, this kind of project, I'm sure eventually I'll have to move into a larger bag. As it gets bigger, but for right now, this is working really great. Then I um, have a new project that I want to start. I'm really excited. I'm so excited. Um, as you guys know, Morit Magazine came out. And it. Um, I'm one of the stockists from Morit Magazine. Got my copy here. It is a jam-packed with really gorgeous patterns. I would say that the offerings in this magazine are just top notch. I really like, this is one of the tops that I want to make. I really like that top. But what I'm going to work on that really caught my eye is um, this shawl. It's called Dualite. And it uses a fingering weight yarn and it is a dark on light, I mean, dark on light um, combination, contrast. Really, really, really like the way that looks. If you purchase more, you get a code that allows you to do a digital download. Um, you can store it on your Ravel Ravelry library, which is what I do. And then you can go ahead and print out the pattern, which is what I've done. Um, here's a close up of that. And so I'm really looking forward to working on this, on this shawl. So what I'm doing is I'm using a um, purple, a really like a plummy purple. And then this other light yarn that also I think goes really well together. The purple is laser sheep yarn. Uh, it's Leslie from Laser Sheep. She's actually a local dyer to me. She dyes some really, really beautiful yarn. This is her label. The color is Release the Mutton. <laughs> the color. And then the other one is my um, Zodiac colorway from Chelsea Yarns that she did last year. It's from the Lux. Um, collection, Zodiac collection, and this is Gemini. It's a beautiful yarn, but these two yarns are completely compatible. Same, um, same content, you know, of um, wool and nylon, and I think it's got cashmere. This is going to make a really, really beautiful combination, so that's what I'm dying to start on. <laughs> Um, I will say that there was another, another, another project from, 
uh, more that I want to work on that is not crochet related. I really want to make these Cat Golden um, Salted Chocolate Cookie Bars. They always have a really, really good recipe. These look phenomenal. I want to make these so bad. So I printed out the, the recipe so I can go ahead and work on it. Um, I made a cake this morning. Usually I'm trying to do something a little extra on Sundays for, for the kids. This morning I baked a cake and I substituted Greek yogurt for butter and it made it really spongy and I really like the texture of it and they did too. So that's something to try if you want to try something different. Um, you can substitute whatever butter they are asking for in the recipe for Greek yogurt. Those of you who bake, you're probably like, yeah, Claudia, we know. Um, but I, I'm not, I'm not a baker. I'm just, I just dabble in the baking things and of the making things. And so, um, I just decided I was going to do that. And yeah, it came out really, really good. I, I baked a cake last Sunday too, but that was just a, a chocolate, um, chocolate cake. Came out good. I mean, they're out of the box. I'm not doing anything crazy. But it's just something nice to have around, you know, people can snack on throughout the day. So my yarn that I have for my Dwelly Take shawl is living in this really just it's a simple drawstring bag. It's not lined, but look at this print. It's by Jen Hewitt. She does all kinds of beautiful, beautiful prints. Really like this bag. Um, I it's like a linen fabric. It's just it's just beautiful bag. So that's where that's living. And yeah, I'm I'm trying to keep my projects simple. Um, I am also working on finishing up my socks that I started for Christmas. And the reason they're not done is because I actually my tension changed a lot. And when I was comparing one sock to the other. It was so much bigger and it's like I'm using the same needle I'm using the same hook crochet hook I'm using the same yarn as that first sock and for some reason that second sock was just coming out so much bigger because my tension was so different so I frogged it to the start and I restarted the toe I'm on the toe right now and when I get more progress on it I'll show it to you but so those are the projects that I'm working on right now I did want to take a minute and talk to you guys about the dodgy bag mail. Um, I had all kinds of things planned so that the launch for the mail would go a little bit smoother. I wanted to put a video up. I wanted to do an Instagram live. But like I said, it's just my health has just been poor. Um, dodgy bag mail, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's an annual make-along that I run with Ali of Little Drops of Wonderful. Um, the term comes from her. When she started making bags, she kept calling them dodgy. And I remember reaching out to her and saying, hey, why don't we like do a make-along so that other people are encouraged to make their own bag because it can, sewing can be very intimidating. But if we're all making it perfectly imperfect bags and nobody cares, they're just for us. And so we started doing the dodgy bag mail and we are in our, I think, fifth year, fourth year. Mm, I don't know, something like that. It's 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 have been happening for quite a bit, uh, quite quite a, um a number of years, and I uh we decided at last year's Zoom event, which is the first one that we had done after the whole mail wrapped up, that a swap component would be uh, something interesting to add, and so what we decided to do was to have people fill out a Google form. And then we would partner them up so that they could exchange bags. And I thought that was a really cool idea. And we had over 50 people um, sign up for the swap. It is not mandatory to be part of the swap to be entered to win prizes. All that has to happen is, for example, if you want to be entered to win an Instagram prize, which is the one that I draw, you just tag your project with the hashtag uh, dodgy bag mail 24. I'll put it right here. And so you just do that. And then at the end of the mail, I'll go through all of those and do like a random number generator thing so that we can pick a winner. 
But if you wanted to swap with someone, then you now have the ability to do that. All you had to do is say where you would be willing to ship to. And let me tell you, it was a little tricky for four or five people because um, we have people from the UK entered, from the, U from the US, from Canada, from Australia, from New Zealand, uh, the Netherlands, Norway, Azerbaijan, Belgium, Italy, and South Africa. So that was quite the span. So this is like a global mail. It's amazing. It's really, really exciting. And I hope that when we do have that Zoom date for you guys, that everybody that participated in the swap will be able to join us. It'll be tricky because of the time, but I think that, um, yeah, it's it's just, it's really, really uh a fun mail. Um, I we extended it a little bit. Usually, it just runs for a month, but it's running from April first um, to May six. So May six is the last day of the mail, and if you're doing a swap, your bag should be to your partner by then. Um, if you don't think that you'll be able to get it to them by then, I would just say please communicate with them and let them know, especially. If you know there are some shipping um, issues going on, let you as I think as long as you communicate with your partner, then you should be okay. Because a Zoom event won't be like that weekend. Um, we'll schedule it probably a couple weeks after that, after the mail ends. So that's the um, dodgy bag mail. I will link. I mean, I usually do this. I will link Ali's channel below, and then I will link uh, her tutorials for bags as well as uh, another channel and another bag tutorial that I like, which is uh, Erica Arndt, I think is her name. Um, she has a bag tutorial for a drawstring bag that I really like. Um, let's see what else. Uh, me personally, I am working on uh, one, two, three, three bags? Three bags because I... Um, I am doing, I'm swapping with two people because we were short one person um, and I, I'm more than happy to do that. That That's no no big deal. I'm not saying it for any other reason except that I'm working on three bags and then I, um, I'm hoping that I, I can do, if time permits, is to be able to do some hand stitching on those bags for the people that I'm swapping with. I think that'll be fun. Um, and... Let's see. Um, if you want it, if you want to include goodies with your package, you're welcome to do so. It is not required. The only requirement for the swap is that you uh, make a bag with your own hands and you send it to your swap partner. There's no requirement of adding any ex anything extra except maybe a nice note. Um, so don't feel bad that you need to put some elaborate package together. That is not what this is about. This is about you making a bag and sharing a bag with someone, which I think is, um, really fun because we've had people make like six, seven, eight bags in a month, which is amazing. Um, and so you end up with, you know, a bag that you want to swap with and this is what it's about. It's just swap some bags. Uh, yeah. So any questions, Feel free to send me an email. The swap is closed. We are not taking in any more um, swap uh, names or anything like that. That's been closed. Uh, I, I really appreciate how people uh, responded so quickly because the window to uh, use the Google form was very short. And I did that deliberately. Um, I kind of paced everything so in such a way that we have a quick turnaround because this make-along doesn't you know, go on for months and months and months. It kind of starts and then, you know, we, we want to wrap it up. We want we want you to have that bag, especially because summer's coming up and summer projects are, you know, going to be cast on or, you know, be worked on. But yeah, that's, that's about all I have. Um, I am hoping to check in with you soon. Hopefully I don't get sick again. And I know there's like a thousand and one things that I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um... There will, uh, there are some dodgy bag pins that were in my shop. I think there's only one left and it will be restocked. I will be restocking them at the end of the week because I've already put an order in. This is what the pin looks like. There you go. 
what I did want to say is that usually when I get the pins back from the maker, the manufacturer, so here's a pin, it comes with this little plastic uh, backing. And I have found that these little plastic backings just pop off and then you lose your pin. Like I've, I've lost pins thinking that this was going to keep them safe. So actually I upgrade all of my pins to these safety metal backs. These are actually my for my daughter's Girl Scout pins that she has on her vest. We have found out that these are, are really good and they secure they secure uh, the pin to wherever you want to put it and it's less likely to, to come off. So I upgrade all of my pins to this backing right here. Because I just, I don't want you to lose your pin. But yeah, I have um, actually have uploaded some new pins to the shop. It's been a while since I have done an update to the shop. And I just, I'll show you real quick. Here's one right here. And I've, they're new to the shop, but they're new, not new to me in the sense that I actually designed these a while ago. But it's it's been a while since I actually have the time to upload the shop. Um, I think these I took to Rhinebeck West this past November, and I'm just now getting around to uploading them in the shop. So here's another one. This one says, never not knitting, because I always like to make sure that my knitters get recognized. Um, I have one that says, never not crocheting. Um, this is one of my favorite. I redesigned this pin. Crochet Powers Activate. I used to have an older, the original version was on a pin back around metal one, but I went ahead and upgraded this one to an acrylic one. Really like this pin. And then I have, oh, and these are really cute. This is my little knitting potion pin. And then I have a crochet potion pin. It's a nice big pin. I really like these. I know these are were for Hall during Halloween, but I, I, I'm with you all year round. So I'm good with my potions, right? Then I have this little cute crochet bee. She's sitting on a little crochet hook. Again, they come with a nice, safe, you know, secure pin in the back. And then I have a version of the crochet bee that's on a uh, regular, normal, round pin back. There she is. So you can get her like this, or you can get her like this. Whichever one you like. Then I um, made some more uh, scissor fobs, because I really, really like making them. And I, just, I like the way they look on my scissors. I don't have any close to me here, but... For example, this was a a Halloween one that I made for my scissors, but I made right now in the shop. If you go to the shop, you're going to find this one. This is our butterfly one. There's a little butterfly right there. And this is I belong to a crocheter in case somebody takes your scissors. They know they belong to you. And then I have this really pretty purple and flower beaded one this is for a knitter um and then i have a couple of the crochet cat lady ones i thought these were cute these are just fun and if you don't want to put them on your scissors you can always put them on a bag you can always clip them onto a bag here's another one that's for crocheters this is a little a little gray heart with some glass beads I just have a lot of fun, a lot of fun making those. So I make them, I pop them out to the shop. I don't make large quantities of them. So usually I make one or two of each design and that's about it. Um, they did really well when I sold them at, you know, the, at the knitting tree at uh, Rhinebeck West. And so I thought, you know, I wanted to make, I wanted to work on something different a couple weeks ago. So I made them, I popped them up to the shop. So they're there for you. The other thing that I did, I've started doing some little spring cleaning around here. God knows it needs it. Um, and I cleaned out my uh, stitch marker bin that I had. 
I have so many stitch markers. And, um, you know, I've been gifted stitch markers. I've made stitch markers. And um, sometimes the metal turns. And they don't, I mean, they're okay. They're still usable. But I, you know, I polished some. I kept the ones that I want. Let, let me just say, I've kept what I wanted to keep. And then I had so many leftovers, I decided to package them up, pop them onto the Etsy shop in these little uh, packages like this. So what you would get would be, for example, in this one here, there is a wood stitch marker. That one says vote. And I have this little tassel one. Um, and then there's some metal ones there. And then I put in at least five of the plastic uh, stitch markers and five of the bulb stitch markers. So every package will have at least uh, five bulb, five plastic, and five decorative stitch markers, like I said. They're all random. I try to choose, you know, the best, the best of the best. But they are used. You know, they did come from my stash. And, um, yeah. It's not expensive. I mean, for the price of one stitch marker, you can get a little bag full of stitch markers. So that's all in my Etsy shop right now. Available. Um, and let's see, what else? Oh, I went to a knit night. Yes. Uh, beginning of the month. Not April, March 1st. It was the, the first Friday of the month. And the, the most local yarn shop to me, this is the most ridiculous thing, you guys. The most local yarn shop to me is like 40 minutes away. And it's like during traffic time. So, and they, their knit night starts at 5 o'clock. It goes, I think, from 5 to 8. And it can get tricky to get down there. But... It's at the April. It's at Apricot Yarn and Supply in San Diego. It's at Liberty Station. It's a wonderful shop. I love, 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 love that shop. It's one of my favorite shops. And so, I met a knitting friend there, and we just were hanging out, talking and knitting. And I'm looking at all of these beautiful knitting projects, and there, there was a couple people crocheting, which was really cool. Um, but. You know, I'm surrounded by yarn. Of course, I'm going to go look at it. And so this is what I got because this really called my name, which is not a, it's not color colors that I would normally be drawn to, but it was really calling my name. So I got two skeins of this Riti uh, Amano. I don't know. I'll just show you the tag. I don't have my glasses. My prescription has changed. You guys, I am practically... Uh, Mr. Magoo with glasses. Okay, here you go. This is the this is the brand. This is the yarn. It's very true to color in this light. It's a miracle, but yes. So I got two of those, and that's a DK weight. And then and then I saw this which is a Rosa Pomar yarn, which I've been wanting to try. They have different kinds of yarn, but I found these two colors. Like, I don't usually choose these kind of colors, but I, they really called my name because it comes with a pattern. It's a knitting pattern, but I really like the look of these gloves. It's just a simple pair of gloves so I got the pattern when I bought the yarn here's the information on that so yeah I want to I want to make that um, I want to make these gloves I have this stuff is living in my uh, bag by Maria of Anito runs through it I bought this at the SoCal Fiber Festival Love this bag, and I'm excited to um, say that the SoCal Fiber Festival is also happening this year, and I will be there again. I will not be buying a $35 funnel cake. If you want to know what that's about, um, 
Did I talk about that? I am sure I, I am sure I talked about that. But just to recap, I went to the SoCal Fiber Festival with my friends and decided I was going to step out and get a little something to eat. And I thought, it's going to get a funnel cake. Come on, a funnel cake? I ordered a funnel cake and I ordered two, and I ordered two bottles of water and it was $35 and I nearly passed out. I was like, what? $35, yes. Anybody who was there that night knows the story. So I will be going back to the SoCal Fiber Festival with money for yarn and a bottle of water and my own lunch. <laughs> You know, those things are just so overpriced. Come on. But anyway, that's all for now. Um, thank you for stopping by. Um, craft with joy. Remember, if you're going to craft, craft for joy. There's no reason to not enjoy what you're doing because then why do it at all? And I will see you next time. Bye.